Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey and today we are going to be speaking about Trembolone and side effects. This is part 3. In part 1 we spoke about Trembolone and its effects on prolactin, in part 2 we spoke about Trembolone and its effect on the thyroid, and in this part we're talking about Trembolone and its effect on cortisol. So if you haven't watched the other two, I would recommend watching them before watching this video. So it is commonly known that Trembolone inhibits cortisol release or at least inhibits cortisol's effect on muscle. Cortisol is a hormone that decreases muscle mass and increases fat mass accumulation, especially around the abdominal region. Since cortisol results in protein catabolism, inhibition of cortisol is quite optimal for bodybuilders. It's been demonstrated that Almost all anabolic steroids inhibit cortisol's action in the cytoplasm of muscle cells, or sarco sarcoplasm, and this results in a decrease in protein catabolism. Furthermore, many anabolic androgenic steroids decrease the production of cortisol in the adrenal cortex, which is its major site of production after it's stimulated to be produced by a hormone known as ACTH. So this would suggest that Trembolone's effect on cortisol is not really unique to it. However, it does have a unique effect, and this is a result of its effect on the thyroid. If you watched the previous video, you'll know that Trembolone increases a hormone known as TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone. In the synthesis of TRH, it has promolecules, as well as itself, that inhibit the production of ACTH. Now, as I've mentioned previously, ACTH is important for the production in cortisol. So, with the decrease of TRH, there's less inhibition of ACTH, which means that technically there should be more cortisol when using Trembolone. On the muscle cells, and the fact that it inhibits part of cortisol's production in the adrenal cortex, this would mean that there would be an overaccumulation of ACTH, as it is not doing anything in the renal cortex, and thus works elsewhere. ACTH isn't only important for cortisol production, it has many other effects. I will display an image above, which just gives a brief effects of ACTH. So this could explain why Trembolone also is quite good at lipolysis. Not only does it increase circulating free thyroid hormones, but it also increases ACTH production through the decrease in TRH, which means ACTH production is not being inhibited. With the increase of ACTH, lipolysis increases, insulin increases, and so does leptin. The effects in the adrenal gland might not be as important, although we don't really know at this point what, to what extent Trembolone and other steroids block the whole pathway in the adrenal cortex, or if they do at all. It was just an in vitro study, but let's just assume that it doesn't work in the adrenal gland. But if it did, it would increase cortisol production, which would result in muscle breakdown, but since Trembolone inhibits this action, cortisol would work elsewhere. But we don't have too much data to support this. So, as you can see here, there are other effects that ACTH has. One of interest is something a lot of us learn in medical school, and that's with increased ACTH, there is more melanogenesis, which means that your skin becomes darker. Now, I haven't really kept an eye out for this effect, but it would be interesting if any of you guys used Trembolone and have noticed darker skin, because this would further prove that this hypothesis could be correct, or perhaps disprove this hypothesis. Of interest, we can see here in the brain that perhaps Trembolone might have a bit of neuroinflammatory damage. However, when looking at other studies, the effect of this isn't really pronounced. But this is just interesting because we will get to Trembolone and its effects on the brain in our last part. And this could all contribute to the trend psychosis that people experience, as well as perhaps the reason why Trembolone might 
and I say might with a grain of salt, cause Alzheimer's down the line. So this was a brief overview of Trembolone and its effect on cortisol. If you're interested, you can stay tuned for part four. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.